The Robinson Hospital is a story of two living legacies, the legacies of two remarkable men of vision. The first is Samuel Robinson, a son of Kilcrum, whose generosity made the original Robinson possible. The second is Lord Beveridge, the father of the National Health Service. Their two visions are intermingled in the fascinating story of the Robinson and the Health Centre. To understand this ultra-modern state-of-the-art facility, we need to go back to a bygone era. The story really starts when the young Samuel Robinson grew up on her family home at Kilcrum. His father, my great-grandfather, was a farmer who also made coffins. Samuel would have learnt the merits of hard work and the rudiments of business at his father's knee. Both parents were devout Presbyterians and the young Samuel Robinson went with them Sunday by Sunday to Ballyweeny Church. It was the preaching from the Ballyweeny pulpit and the precepts of home which were to shape Samuel Robinson's business values in years to come. It was in Ballymoney town that he learnt the grocery trade, a busy town which was thronging on hiring fair day. Here he worked in his uncle James McGaw's shop at the top of Main Street. Then in April 1888, he and his brother David packed their bags and embarked on an emigrant ship like this, leaving Derry for Philadelphia. There they joined Samuel's Ballymoney friend and fellow apprentice at McGaw's, Robert C. Crawford, pictured here many years later. Brisk trade led Samuel and David to send to Kilcrum for two other brothers to reinforce their fast-growing staff. As the Robinson family became more deeply involved, Samuel's mother died back at Kilcrum and his younger brother David had to go home. In the meantime, they had been joined by brother James and the youngest brother, William. Business was now booming in the pre-First War years and by 1917 the chain had 186 little groceries. There then followed a period of growth by mergers and takeovers. Horses were giving way to trucks and the New American Stores Company was born. Larger stores with centralised deliveries and separate meat counters were way ahead of their time elsewhere. It was all a far cry from Samuel Robinson's little model which reminded him of McGaw's shop in Main Street. By the late 20s, Samuel Robinson's company had over 2,700 stores and employed tens of thousands of people, many times the current population of Ballymoney. Own label products and the shopping trolley were two further innovations we were to see nearly half a century later. Samuel Robinson had not forgotten Ballymoney. His parents at Kilcrum died and he wanted to make a fitting memorial. In 1929, he made a trip home to Ballymoney. There, he met Hugh McCurdy Hamilton and discussed options. Hugh McCurdy Hamilton consulted another eminent businessman in the town, Robert McElderry. A bigger meeting was then held in the old High Street Cafe. Samuel Robinson was there. He heard it pass the motion to provide a cottage hospital, second to none, equip it and promise to contribute annually one half of the running expenses. And so the idea of the Robinson Hospital was born. A man with a great business career had offered his living legacy to the town where it all began. Little did he know where it was to lead. After a public meeting in the town hall, everything went into top gear and things really began to move. Hugh Taggart submitted the winning tender of £42,500 to include the bungalow and boundary wall. His team started work on the 1st of February 1931 and the building was completed in the spring of 1933. Seen here from just beyond the Cow Bridge, it was an imposing sight. This magnificent new cottage hospital must have appeared a truly fitting memorial to his parents. He would have been imagining the excitement of the official opening which was conducted in his absence, for he remained in America. The hospital was opened on the 1st of September 1933. Johnny Dunlop, a schoolboy who was there, recalls the day. We were marched from school uh, down to the Robinson Hospital for the opening and the lady who was doing the opening was about half an hour late. There were sandwiches and pastry which I had never eaten before. I had seen them in the shop wonders, I knew them at Master's shop wonders, but never eaten them, never had the money to eat them, to get them. So uh, me being seven years old hungry and cold and all the rest, I went forward and lifted a sandwich and one of the staff of the catering firm 
come over and cuff my ears severely and took the sandwich from me again. The whole town was waiting to meet Senator Leslie and the Duchess of Abercorn. Boys' Brigade, Brownies and Guides were lined up alongside Johnny's class for inspection. The whole nursing and support staff were there under the watchful eye of the new matron, Miss Margaret McCachie, later to become Mrs Michael Derry. Speeches were made to an attentive crowd sitting in the sun, and little Margaret Robinson charms the Duchess. Then the crowds in their Sunday best chatted in the sun as they waited to see the inside of a cottage hospital as modern as any in the kingdom. The new Robinson Cottage Hospital was run as an independent hospital under the governance of a board of management. The early Robinson board had complete control of every aspect of the running of the hospital. Then after the publication of the Beveridge Report, the new National Health Service was formed. After many discussions, the board handed over the hospital buildings and its management to the health service. The board's function today is to manage the endowment funds left in trust by Samuel Robinson. Today, these funds stand at over £2 million and the income is passed over to the health service to be used on the Robinson Hospital. Our treasurer provides regular reports on investment returns. Much of the credit for the board's evolution into its present role of catalyst in the development of services on the site must go to the late Mr Bertie Thompson. He was a man of great integrity and his influence in the hospital's development was profound. In 1963, encouraged by his chairman and fired by the vision of Dr Joe Burns, Bertie Thompson played his part in creating the health centre. The newly refurbished hospital is therefore just the latest in a long line of developments which the Robinson Trust has helped into being. The Robinson Board intend to continue using the income from the invested capital to help the Causeway Trust develop this unique healthcare resource. What is happening here today would, I am sure, bring great joy to Samuel Robinson. Caring and curing was a phrase coined for the Northern Ireland Health Service. It fits the Robinson exactly, as we see the ethos of the founders worked out in daily practice. Let's now listen to our schoolboy of 60 years ago. I have been in the hospital several times as a patient, and in my opinion it was one of the hospitals in Northern Ireland, if not Ireland. It was a great, great hospital. Not only the hospital itself, but the staff. They are out of this world. Oh, Hello, Joe. Johnny. How, How are, are you? Good to see you again. Yes, and good to see you looking so well. Thank How you have very you much. been? Not too bad, thanks. And you're getting out and about okay. Oh, yeah. The Robinson's third matron, Miss Wilson, here holding her retirement bouquet, was one of a superb line of managers. Dr. Billy McCartney remembers her predecessor. Miss Logan was the matron at the time. A wonderful character she was. She had the attention of everybody. The nurses worshipped her, patients worshipped her. Nothing was too great trouble for her. Nurse managers like Sister Canning, Miss Wilson's successor, were leaders of considerable stature. They carried on the tradition of efficient and effective caring, which was the Robinson's hallmark. After Sister Canning uh, came Sister Coyle. She was a wonderful person to talk to. She came from Sligo and we used to have many, many interesting conversations. And my predecessor, uh, Mr. Bill Martin, um, who was on his own here for many, many years, uh, would have used the place for operations much, much more extensively than I did. I did most of my operating in the Root Hospital. And in those days, he would have undertaken quite major procedures in the Robinson. His assistant then in the old Robinson Theatre was Sister Dolly Kelly. Sister Kelly was a remarkable person. She, we once estimated that she had been responsible for the supervision of no less than 40,000 operations in the town of Bellamoney, a proportion of which, of course, were in the Robinson. And it never seemed to give her any trouble to lift her staff and her instruments and to travel across town. In the early days, Dr. Belford had done all the surgery at the Robinson. He was for many years both a GP and a surgeon. At least once a week, went over there to do uh, um, tonsillectomies, 
I was giving the anaesthetics, Dr. Belford was doing the operating. He was an MD plus a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. The Robinson from the outset was primarily a place where the GPs could treat their patients. We took in our patients, we examined them and um, investigated them and uh, the Robinson was a very happy wee place. For many years happiness in the Robinson came with the sound of newborn infants. Someone who remembers those days well is consultant gynaecologist and obstetrician Dr Bert Harvey. My earliest recollections uh, of the Robinson Hospital go back to 1973 when I was appointed registrar to uh, Mr Charlie Irwin in the Root Hospital. Any problems necessitating uh, consultant help were dealt with by Mr Irwin or myself. Uh, deliveries were conducted in the uh, old delivery ward which uh, subsequently became a kitchen and is now a very fine chapel. In gynecological operations and uh, caesarean sections were carried out in the old theatre. The old theatre is now of course a very grand reception area. This old chair upon which I am seated was the very chair used uh, by Mr Irwin for many years while performing gynecological surgery in the Robinson Theatre. I subsequently used it myself and then when the theatre was uh, discontinued I rescued this uh, same chair and took it over to the Root Hospital. I use it to this very day. Another maternity professional from the Robinson era is Sister Gail Spears. She recalls one of her happiest days in the unit which closed in 1995. One of the famous babies that I looked after in the postnatal period in the Robinson maternity was Jenny Irvine, daughter of Audrey and Andy Irvine. As you know, Andy was the famous uh, Scottish Rugby International. And Jenny is now a fourth year medical student. In 1963, Robert Michael Derry, the last surviving member of the first Robinson board, wanted to put accumulated funds to work. He approached Dr Joe Burns for ideas. Plans were drawn up and Hugh Taggart and Sons won the contract for the next major development. The Barramundi Health Centre was opened by Lord Grey of Naunton in 1970, in January of that year, and I myself actually didn't come here till six months after that time, so I have nothing to do with the planning. The planning lies with the, the memory of the late uh, Dr Joe Cecil Burns. Uh, Joe and many of his colleagues travelled to various parts of Scotland and England, as well as through Ireland, to look for uh, ideas from other health centres. And his idea was to put many uh, features of health in the community under the one roof. Uh, and this has come to fruition and came to fruition in 1970 and in fact turned out to be one of the first health centres uh, of its kind, where not only could general practice, ordinary health, be dealt with, but also various uh, per other aspects such as health visiting, district nursing, headquarters of course, uh, speech therapy, dental, chiropody, and of course social work, always under the one roof, with each having their own individual offices. Throughout the day, the health centre is a veritable hive of activity. Just one of the many services provided is this baby clinic. Here, a stream of parents and little ones come for those vital early checkups. Parents have the opportunity to meet together in a pleasant waiting room. They can compare notes before baby is invited inside. The health visitor records a young man's vital statistics before he goes through to see doctor. This clinic is a fine example of the totally caring and yet scrupulously efficient clinical approach of the health centre. Ah. Hi. Brilliant. And you brush those teeth? Super. Mm -hmm. mm, sometimes, is that right? <laughs> no problem hearing wise. Raise the buttons. Go around wide, what do you see? They're a bit salty, somebody tells me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they? Well, listen, then you can take a taste away. Mm. What do you think? What do you think the colour of this one is? Oh, God, it's 
Ja, ja. 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 This is Joe Burns' vision in action. The community's health care needs being effectively delivered in an informal atmosphere by a highly efficient medical and nursing team. As adult patients enter the health centre, they arrive to find another of Joe Burns' characteristic touches. In many health centres, patients wait to be caught by tannoy from a large communal waiting room. Here, each doctor has his or her own waiting room. The rule is that doctor personally invites every patient individually oh, into folks. surgery. Right, Mr. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Just have a seat. Dr. Johnson maintains this exercise is a marvellous aid to GP fitness. Uh, also under the roof of the health centre has been a very large treatment room, one of the largest uh, of its type, and this allowed a lot of room for our nurses to carry out the various intricate procedures. Uh, and I must say that the treatment room here in Balamonis Health Centre is hugely subscribed by patient, to by patients. There, there's a tremendous uh, turnover of work over 50,000 patients pass through the treatment room alone within the health centre. At reception, which is large and spacious, uh, our girls are always welcoming, we hope, uh, and uh, we do know that they give a great introduction to any patient coming to the health centre. In the evenings, the health centre acts as host to over 20 different community groups. They include St John's Ambulance, Causeway Care and many others, including the MS fundraisers, encouraged here by Mrs Pat Crossley. And whilst we're sent, remember, £25,000 to headquarters this year, we can't be complacent. We must continue with enthusiasm, uh, fundraising more than ever, because that's the best way that we can help our local MS members. Outwardly, the Robinson Hospital today looks almost exactly as it did when it was opened in 1932. The Robinson's caring and curing ethos remains as untouched as the white facade. But inside, as we shall see, the Causeway Trust has totally transformed the facility. The inception of the National Health Service was the seed, looking back now, that is flowering at the Robinson Hospital today. The combination of beverages, vision, of healthcare free at the point of delivery, the vision of Samuel Robinson for a college hospital and the innovative thinking of those on the ground here in Balamone have now created something of very great uniqueness and value for the entire Causeway area. We must at the same time appreciate the wonderful history of the Robinson Hospital over the past 60 years, but not get stuck in sentimentality. The Robinson, the health centre and their staff exist to deliver efficient, value for money services targeted to the needs of today. It is providing the things needed by the people and their health care purchaser, the Northern Board. That means moving on in delivering a different variety of services. Maternity service at the Robinson, for example, could never have survived with the standards required of maternity services nowadays, it was a service that was going to be wound down anyway. Over the past few years, the Causeway Health and Social Services Trust began to get the Robinson ready for the new millennium. At the same time, the Causeway Trust had to forsake part of its original plan to centralise all services in the new Causeway Hospital. So the first project of the new Robinson Hospital was the development of an entirely new physio department. The new unit now handles large numbers of patients from a wide area and it's managed by Karen McMaster. We have some very high-tech equipment which isn't available in a lot of the other hospitals. We have specialist muscle testing um, equipment so we're able to evaluate a patient's condition very accurately and then set them up a tailor-made program. We also have a balance monitor um, for monitoring balance and helping people to regain this. It would be the only piece of equipment of its type in Northern Ireland. 
the new hydrotherapy pool is also a very significant resource for patients both young and old. It's one of the few pools in the area. Adults come for treatment for a variety of conditions such as orthopaedic, arthritic, rheumatoid, joint replacements. There's a large number of children come through the pool. These children are all born with maybe some congenital abnormalities or some of them would maybe have got fractures or have rheumatoid conditions as well. And they thoroughly enjoy this, um, something a lot of places aren't able to offer. Our hopes are to restore our patients to their full well-being. In a lot of cases now, that's not always possible, but we do strive to get patients to their maximum potential and improve their quality of life. One such patient is Alec Robinson, who suffers from MS. His visits to the pool at the Robinson are a regular part of his treatment. With the skilled assistance of Karen's staff, Alec is able to take exercise which would not otherwise be possible. And with what results? Acupuncture is another facet of the same department. We have also developed a very innovative scheme for persons with learning disabilities. The old laundry has been converted to a new horticultural shed. Kitchen and toilet facilities have been incorporated. We are also using some seven acres of grounds to develop this project onto a meaningful scale. We have plans for a shop for the produce. Already we are seeing real results. The current team has won the contract to maintain the Causeway Hospital grounds, enabling them to earn for themselves while having therapeutic work. The GP wing has had to move on. It's had to move away from doing some acute services to intermediate care. Intermediate care beds enable patients recovering from acute surgery or medical treatments in Coleraine or other acute hospitals like the Royal to be superbly managed by their GPs in the Robinson before finally going home. It deals with a wide variety of conditions and has a special role in relation to the elderly. We also provide a palliative care service at the Robinson with an average of six beds by being used by uh, that type of patient. We also have built on a small extension to allow us to develop a daycare service for palliative care patients. We are supported in this work with our palliative care nurses who are now located on the first floor at the Robinson. All of this is backed up by the bereavement counselling service managed by Cruz, another voluntary organisation. Partnerships depend on people, and a key partner in the Robinson team today is Sister Anne Bradley, who runs the GP wing. Sister Bradley's patients come from a wide area. They will either be admitted from home for treatment by their GPs, or from a regional or other acute hospital for a period of recovery before going home. The patients in the GP wing represent every facet of the community and come from all kinds of backgrounds. The Robinson Hospital knows social or religious boundaries as it cures and cares for its patients. Mr Matthews arrives from Coleraine to discuss matters with a patient needing his specialist care. The, this leg that's been giving you all the trouble, um, was it sore after the operation? Pretty bad. And does our intermediate care role is complemented by the provision of a comprehensive range of palliative care. This is akin to hospice care and is the active total care of patients with progressive advanced disease with a limited prognosis. Many of our palliative care patients suffer from those cancers which have not responded to treatment. But palliative care is broader than cancer care and includes patients with other chronic disease, such as motor neuron disease, certain forms of heart disease, and AIDS. Patients are admitted from all over the Causeway area. Here at the Robinson, they are cared for by a multi-professional team with training in this very specialized field. We provide support in all areas of the patient's life, physical, emotional, social, and spiritual 
and we will care for the family and friends as part of our total care philosophy. The care our patients need will depend on the stage of their illness. Some will need convalescence or rehabilitation after surgery or radiotherapy. Some will need care after chemotherapy. Others will need pain management. Yet others will need a period of respite care and some will need care at the end of life. The joint editor of this standard textbook, Dr. Derek Doyle, is a world expert on palliative medicine. He spoke to a special conference organised as part of the Robinson reopening. Afterwards, he had this to say. Palliative care is the care of people with very fine advanced illness. People that can't be cured, but they've got enormous problems of pain or suffering. It may be emotional suffering, it may be fear, it may be care and worry about their relatives. What we're aiming to do is to train every doctor and nurse in the country in how better to look after those people. And we get the impression from what they're telling us that doctors, whether they're GPs or consultants, are absolutely committed to doing this, but they need training. And the opportunity that's offered through the Robinson to talk to GPs, to train consultants, speak to young medical students, train nurses, and link up with others doing the same thing around the world are enormous. And it's one of the most exciting ventures I think I've seen for many years. Dr. Eve Richardson, another distinguished conference speaker, was equally impressed. I'm delighted to be here in Northern Ireland as the Chief Executive of the National Council for Hospice and Specialist Palliative Care. Our aim is to disseminate best practice across the UK and Causeway Health and Social Services Trust is a real example of best practice. Helen McKeown friend of a former patient of the unit, equally convinced of this best practice, has also come to see the new unit. Families of palliative care patients who need to stay close to the relative for long periods can now rest in the hospital, or they can use the family room to be together over a simple meal, or simply contemplate or seek solace in this little chapel. Then, Martin Lewis, another man well acquainted with hospice-type care, is shown around. Today, like 60 years ago, the Robinson is ready to receive its many guests. Civic and business leaders arrive to see Ballymoney's new health care facility. Dr Dennis Martin returns remembering his late father's role. Dr Mill Matthews and his lady retrace a path he would have trodden countless times a surgeon years ago. Having spent many years working and operating in uh, the Robinson Hospital, I'm delighted to be back again to see this wonderful extension. I think the hospital has done a marvellous service throughout its existence and it was wonderful to see just the advances that are coming. The Northern Health Board Chief Stuart MacDonald and Ballymoney Deputy Mayor Bill Kennedy stride in together. Enjoying the occasion is Mrs Sybil Burns, wife of the late Dr Joe Burns. John McElderry looks at pictures of the refurbished hospital. Perhaps he is recalling the story of how his mother, 60 years ago, had saved his father's life before going on some time later to marry her patient. And here a row of happy medics wait to hear the verdict of Bally Money's broadcaster son Martin Lewis as he formally opens the new GP wing. What is different and special about today is that you don't have to look any further than this room and this building to actually see success in all kinds of ways. And I think that what you have achieved uh, is, is, is hugely impressive. Um, the uh, integration services of services is particularly important as far as the hospice is concerned and I know because I was here eight years ago in Coleraine with the McMillan nurses and I, I just you know look at how terrific it is that the full range of hospice services the, the inpatient unit the home care um, the bereavement counseling I see you've got crews up there with a base on the first floor you've got the McMillan nurses looking after home care on the first floor and for all of these to come together really achieves if you like, one of the dreams of the, of the hospice movement and everything that it has tried to achieve in this country over the last uh, 30 years since Dame Cicely Saunders started changing the meaning of the word hospice to, to turn the concept of hospice from a big grey building up on the hill behind the trees where people go to die to, to a place that is full of warmth and hope 
and friendship and happiness. And it seems to me that you encapsulate all those things in the Rolls Royce as a facility uh, that you actually have here for, uh, for palliative care. I 60 years ago, the Duchess of Abercorn had unveiled a plaque. Today, it Pretty was great. to be no different. Dr. Johnson and Northern Health Board Chairman Robert Hanna pose happily together before joining Martin and Stuart for another official photograph in front of the commemorative plaque. The Causeway Director Jim Lockery explains to Martin how the newest jewel in his facility's crown was conceived and created. Days earlier, Margaret Gordon had finalised her plans for the new child care unit. And Martin was met on the very threshold of the unit by this engaging young patient of Margaret's. At first, Martin does the interviewing. This is no reluctant businessman. Answers come thick and fast from a confident youngster. Neither Martin nor Mrs Craig, the trust chairman, seem to mind, as this little boy takes centre stage for the photographers. This new unit replaces the old maternity unit. It meets magnificently the Northern Board's requirement to provide for children with special needs. Some days later, the Borough Council threw open the Town Hall for a celebratory banquet for the Robinson staff, and Councillor Frank Campbell arrives in his usual good form. Mayor William Logan welcomes his chief guest, Mrs Craig, as councillors and Robinson staff mingle at the pre-dinner reception in the pleasant surroundings of the old Town Hall library. This is a welcome chance for doctors and other staff to relax after the hurly-burly of the reopening. Mrs Craig has a chance to discuss life at the front line with Dr John Flynn. Ballymoney Borough Council Chief Executive John Dempsey enjoys the occasion with Bill Tweed, his opposite number, at the Causeway Trust and the rest of the Mayor's party. Meanwhile, host councillors and their guests, the Coleraine and Moyle Mayors, look on. As the Mayor escorts Dr Eve Richardson up the magnificent staircase, it is a moment of pride. This distinguished visitor has confirmed the importance to the Causeway community of the new Robinson. The Council are believers in teamwork between the diverse elements which make up Valley Money, and here is another fine example of private and public money working powerfully together. And as always, it's people like these who make it happen, directors and staff, full and part-time professionals and volunteers who give their time to, cre to create progress. And as top table pauses before Grace, Mrs Craig and David Robinson take pride of place either side of Mayor Logan. Then it's back to business. Here in the new boardroom, created from the original nurses' bedrooms of the old Robinson, the Causeway Trust Board has its first meeting since the reopening. As everyone knows, we've had just had the launch, relaunch of the Robinson Hospital, and I think the first thing that I should do is to congratulate everyone concerned in that particular week. The day itself was extremely successful, and it would be very remiss of me if I didn't specially congratulate June and her staff for all that they did. There was a lot of hard work and everything went extremely smoothly. I have written to everyone concerned thanking them, but I'm sure that everyone here will agree that it was a very successful week and we got nothing but praise for the entire week. Bill, do you want to any comment? No, I think you've said it all, Chairman. Okay, thank you all very much indeed. So this is the new Robinson, a health centre still at the forefront of comprehensive patient service. A hospital completely re-equipped to meet the complex needs of modern community care. And an ethos of caring service which shines as brightly today as it did 60 years ago. Bill Tweed, the Causeway Trust Chief Executive, can be proud of the transformation his team have created. The Robertson is a highly effective partnership between the Causeway Health and Social Services Trust and the Robinson Memorial Incorporated Trustees. 
Bonamoni's health care needs have changed greatly since Samuel Robinson built the new hospital. So too have the means of delivery. We have been fortunate to have the people on the ground throughout that time with the dedication and creativity to make the new Robinson as fit for its purpose today as when it was originally built.